This will change your life. And I'm not talking just about arguments, fighting, controversies, disagreements, and any other redundant word I can think of off the top of my head. This will change your life. 10 things to consider before engaging in controversy. This is going to save you some pain. Number 10, am I focused on God's glory? Now let's get into the boxing ring. You have an opportunity. There it is. Somebody said something. They did something. You know, they push your button because you push theirs too. But you have the opportunity. It's sitting right there. Uh, what you going to do? Stop and ask the question. Will my participation in this subject in this disagreement, even in this conversation, will it glorify God? Am I motivated rightly by engaging? Are there people who simply push your buttons more than others? Do certain things drive you crazy on a daily basis? Why does it seem that people, things, and situations are in our way? Why do we seldom go through a day without some experience of conflict? The answer to all of these questions is that we think of our own lives as our own and we are more committed to the purposes of our own kingdom than we are to God's. Number nine from Buck Parsons, what is my ultimate goal? If you engage with any goal less than glorifying God, and there are some ancillary issues, then you shouldn't do it. Just butt out. Stay out of the controversy. The number eight thing to remember, am I the right person to engage? Something happens at church. There's talk about, you know, our favorite subject, the pastor. You Here's some going on. It is at perhaps some sort of brunch table. You're having your muffins before church. And somebody's talking about something going on inside of the church. Who are you? What do you have to do with the issue? Are you actually a part of the story? Or do we simply need to go, this ain't none of my business? Number seven from Buck Parsons, am I involving a bigger audience than necessary? If you start talking to others about others, you're gossiping. And if you have not done a study on gossip lately, woo, it leads to death. No kidding. That's how the Proverbs speak about the issue of gossip. You engage in it, you contribute to it, you consume it, you're participating in it, you're gonna die! Something terrible is gonna happen. Why? Because God does not like backbiting. He likes us affirming, helping, lifting up, speaking positive words. If we're contributing to participating in gossip, it is only to tear down somebody. And God says there's a consequence for that. The death. Number six, how will I treat the person with whom I disagree? Ask this question before you respond, contribute, engage, type. Increasingly in the West and here in America, we're occupying uh, d entirely different moral universes. That these moral universes are irreconcilable, they're impenetrable, um, that we are unable to reason together on even the most basic essentials necessary for the common good. Number five, would I not rather be wronged? Love overlooks a lot of stuff. If somebody slights you, hurts you, do you need to engage? Does it really need to be addressed? Or can you just take the knock? All of your online communication, all of your digital communications, what Paul commands in his letter to the Ephesians, where he tells us to speak truth in love. Consider this before engaging. Have I sought counsel? I know, I don't need it either. But the Bible says something different. We like to think, I got this, I've got it figured out. I don't need your opinion. I don't need advice on that. I don't need to talk to somebody about this issue. I need to engage. 
Ready, fire, aim, away we go. The Bible says get counsel. If this is a controversy, there, there's sin going on. No doubt about it, there's sin going on. Whoever is right, whoever is wrong, doesn't matter. Sin is happening. In other words, controversy, conflict, it's a big deal. Number three, am I actually striving to edify others? Go ahead, ask yourself, when you fire away on the internet, are you seeking to edify, to strengthen, to bring about unity and peace and harmony and love? And are you desiring to glorify God? We must ask that question before we clackety clack. Number two from a Burke Parsons, what is my motive? Why do I feel like, ooh, there's a fray, I need to jump into it. What is driving us? And there is one major motivation, the glorifying of God, but there are others. Is it because you desire harmony? Is it because you desire that dumb liberal to become godly? <laughs> or is it because <laughs> these people that are trying to take over our country? <laughs> While there is a temptation to do that, and I certainly understand that feeling, I've got to ask, whoa, what's my motive? Certainly a Christian should have higher ideals than a talking head on a cable news show. Finally, question number one. <laughs> have I prayed? That means you need to take a time out. That means you need to calm your heart. That means you need to engage with God, asking him from wisdom on high before you engage. Now, perhaps you're thinking, these things that you're talking about are so common. Everybody does it. Everybody talks about others. Everybody's hammering away on the internet. The water cooler conversations, we pick clicks, we take sides, we get involved in gossip. Is this really that big of a deal? Ask yourself the question. What's it like to live in Western civilization these days? Do you like the division that has happened? Do you like the side taking that has taken place? Do you like being at odds with your neighbor? What about in your church? Are there conversations that are building up, encouraging, helping, edifying, glorifying God, making us love one another more? If not, then this is a big deal. The issue of engaging in controversy is not a small one. That is what dominates our current context, isn't it? Everybody has a contention. Everybody has a controversy. Everybody has a difference of opinion. Everybody's taking sides. Whilst you and I have no power or ability to change the whole world, we can change our world when we become wise in engaging in controversy. Who's a good girl? You're not, because nobody does good. No, not one. Romans 5 says we're born in sin and iniquity, no, and our no, hearts no, are deceitful no. and wicked. You know that if you'd use the law, which brings about the knowledge of sin.